Okay. Imagine now you have this dude. Let's call him Billy. His real name is William, but they call him Billy. Billy lifts weights, so you can call him a bodybuilder. And he works as a CEO in some in some insurance corporation. So in his free time, he lifts weights, and he's also intelligent. He works as CEO at an insurance corporation. His salary is around 3,500 euros a month. So, you think this guy, nobody's going to mess with this guy. This guy is a very strict CEO, he's very stern with his employees. He can be fun to be around, but he's very strict, so nobody's going to mess with this guy. One day, at the gym, you see him with bruises on the left side of his face. The bruises are blue. And you also see him with um, some bite marks on his arm. And you ask him, uh, Billy, what happened? He told you, ah, oh, don't worry about it. Just some hooligan that was drunk and attacked me. But I'll get over it. You sense that something was wrong with his statement. Not that he was lying, but you sense something more awkward about it. Three months later, he was hospitalized. And then, after being hospitalized for about two weeks in intensive care, he could work again, go to gym again. And then you encounter him in Oscar Billy. Who's that hooligan? I want to see that guy. And he pulls out his phone and shows you a picture. And what you see is this blonde haired lady with red lipstick, clear blue eyes, a very delicate figure. And you get triggered by it. You think, oh, this chick is hot. And he shows you more pictures of that chick. And then you tell him, okay, Billy, you may be seeing this chick now. I'm happy for you. She's a hot chick indeed. But I asked who that hooligan was and why that hooligan's up to you. And Billy tells you, this is the hooligan. You're in a shock. Then Billy shows you pictures of him and this chick together. And he tells you, Bart, that's a Dutch name, he tells you, Bart, I've been with this woman for about five months. She is beating the crap out of me. And you know what? I'm so embarrassed that this is happening to me. I'm a CEO, I lift weights, and yet this chick got a grip on me. I mean, I tried to tell one of my relatives that this was going on, that I didn't know what to do. Man, he laughed at the whole idea about a man being beaten by a woman, especially a woman he's inf romantically involved with. The relative even told me that such men are, such men deserve to be beaten, such men deserve to be abused. So I didn't even confess what was going on with me directly because I realized he would. He would uh, play with all of me and he would laugh at me. And then you keep listening to this Billy. And you figure out that this chick, even though she has this delicate, soft, feminine appearance, that she's really an alcoholic hooligan, filled with rage and frustrations. And that she from time to time unleashes that rot onto people, that narcissistic rot. Then you ask Billy to allow you to have some of those pictures. You go with, the, with those pictures to a friend of yours who is a psychologist, a licensed one, and he 
recognizes dangerous people quickly. You show him those pictures of this delicate chick. He looks at them and he tells you, uh, Bart, I hope you're not interested in this chick, are you? And you ask him, why do you ask that? And he tells you, Bart, this woman over here, I'm telling you, bad idea. Her facial expressions don't match the situation. If you're being photographed by a photographer and you're in a safe environment, your body language must reflect this. Her smile on her face is a forced smile. And her eyes have this sad expression in them. Remember, Bart, the eyes are the windows to the soul. I'm telling you, this chick has some dangerous issues. Don't do it. And then this guy even points out on some of those pictures of, of her on holiday how she has this narcissistic, um, how do I say, this narcissistic um, reflection in those pictures. She often wants people to take full pictures of her to give her the full attention. And the psychologist explained to you, when people are on holiday, they often make pictures of the environment where they are, or the people they meet, or they make selfies, which are close to them. They seldom take the time and effort to let people make many pictures of them standing fully in the picture on multiple places. Because the psychologist explained to them, think about it, you're on holiday, you only have like two weeks holiday, then you have to go back to work. Why would you? Take away hours from your holiday. Let, let the people make full pictures of you. It is if you want to prove something. So, that was the parable. I'm already seven minutes in this video, but I take my time to give you this parable. Why? Stereotypes can mislead you. When that Billy told part that an alcoholic hooligan harassed him, he was thinking of some dude with a bottle in his hand, who's part of some football club where he's fighting often. He was also thinking about a guy with tattoos or a guy who's often at the pub screaming and shouting. That's a stereotype he had of a hooligan and that stereotype was not completely wrong. That stereotype reflected things were common amongst hooligans. But the stereotype was misleading because other types of hooligans who were just as risky were not identified by Bart because Bart's perception of a hooligan was this, these men of the lunars who failed in life with tattoos or with a lot of a lot of swearing while hanging out in pubs looking for fights. That's what he was thinking of, about the, when he heard the word hooligan. He never suspected a woman to be a hooligan, especially not a chick that looked so good. And especially not expect that a guy like Billy who was highly educated and physically fit could be physically and mentally assaulted by a chick like that. But it happened. Now stereotypes are collective images that reflect something about a group of people. Stereotypes are never absolute. It can be that you are from a neighborhood where a lot of people speak very hard. And because you grew up there, you have this tendency to speak hard, speak loud also. So now there's a stereotype about the people in your environment that they um, speak loud and they drink a lot of beer. Why? Because there's a, there are two beer corporations nearby and the employees that work there can get free beer. So that's how the stereotype developed. Now the stereotype is factual, but it's not the truth. It's a factual thing because it reflects things that are common within your community. But it's, not in a, but it's not true in the sense that everyone is like that. But nevertheless, stereotypes have their valuable purpose. But stereotypes can also be misleading. That's why 
it is important to look at the bigger picture. Now, let me continue with that parable. Bart later saw this chick who was now the ex of Billy. When he saw her, he sensed awkward. He sensed a bit of anger hanging around this chick. But Bart, being so easy as he is, approached her anyway and they had a very fun conversation. But still, Bart felt very uncomfortable. Not because of what Billy told him. Because he only saw pictures of the chick. And he only heard the opinion of one of his friends who was a licensed psychologist. In life, in real life, he sensed that the way she communicated was a way off. And when he later thought about it, he felt as if he was being love bombed. So when he realized he was being loved, bumped, he realized it's a red flag, I'm out of here. He was an easy guy, sometimes way too easy, but fortunately for him, when he recognized red flags, he did pay attention to them. Look, I mentioned before, stereotypes are factual, but they're not the truth. Stereotypes can be useful only in the right context. Just remember, Stereotypes can also trap you and deform your perception. And yes, there are alcoholic female hooligans out there who are just like that fictive chick that I used in this parable. And some of them, I would say many of them, tend to be pathological liars. On Instagram, on Facebook, on social media, you have this wonderful existence. Or on LinkedIn because you have a job. But outside of that, if you would see them without them noticing it, you would be horrified. How they lie, they cheat, they mistreat those around them. Some of them live like hermits, really don't want any contact with anyone, locked up in their own apartment watching violent videos or addicted to porn or whatever, yes, they exist. But the media never, almost never shows you such women. The media projects stereotypes into your mind. And if you're not careful, this bewitchment of the media will deform your perception. So when someone tells you how someone really is, you tend to not believe them. You tend to even blame them or become upset with them. Now, if someone told you that a grown man in his 40s was threatened by a child of four years old, and that's why he had to beat the heck out of the child to discipline the child, then you know that doesn't add up. Because a child of four doesn't even have that much muscular strength to deal with a man in a grown man in his 40s. So when you hear that someone had to hit a child, because a child was disrespectful, you know that it's child abuse is BS. Because you know children can't think com- in complex manners. So there are times you hear stories and you can, you can clearly see that something doesn't add up. But in this case, the only thing that didn't add up was Bart's perception. What Billy told was factual. It happened. But Bart could not process it because well, it went against his conditioning. And here's one thing I want to remind you of. A lot of folks don't want to let go of their conditioning. So let's say you are a guy like Billy. I'm not saying that you're highly educated, nor that you live in ways. But let's say you are, you're a man, and you tell people, not, not people in general, but you tell folks that you or were the victim of domestic violence. First, many will laugh at you saying, well, you're a man, so this is likely not possible. Or they will try to excuse this or minimize it and think that you overreacted. Well, such things happen. And the country in which I live, each year, there are many men, some say in the 200, others say 300, but there are hundreds of men 
arriving in, uh, how to say, home shelters because their wives or girlfriends were threatening their lives. They were in a serious danger. Some received serious bodily damage due to the physical assaults of their significant others. Yet, don't expect the media to talk about it. There was one time they made a documentary about this. But even that documentary was misleading and they all showed it once on TV. They pretend as if it doesn't exist. I'm telling you, stereotypes, if you use them in a practical manner, they can reveal things that are common within the community, so you can use them to analyze things and to have discourse analysis and all of those things. You can do good anthropological and sociolo sociological research with it. But stereotypes can also be misleading. Remember that. That being said, agree with Christ and be at peace.